That's gonna be a Malphite. Silas insta-locked for C9. Yeah, and they've so they've put Fudge back on Malphite uh, duty here. They have had pretty good success here uh, in the LCS with this rotation. Plus, they're expecting either the Zoe or the Syndra to yep. come out for BDD. You're completely right. There it is. Syndra picked up. And the reason I like this Malphite pick is because you see the enemy top laner and they have Jin, Lee Sin, Graves. Not very good tank killers. Jin especially, not a great tank killer. So the Malphite will get a lot of value here as the only AP damage is to Syndra. So it feels like C9 have drafted a composition really to shut Gen G's down. It's completely different than game number one opening draft here from Cloud9. I like the adjustment from the coaching staff. Playing the full best of five, you get opportunities to test out which angle you want to go for. Last time, so much more all-in, so much more one-dimensional. This one has a lot more robust mid-game mid team fighting, a lot of answers here to what Genji are talking about. And to your point about Syndra, she's also very much single target burst, going to look for those stuns onto the Misfortune and try and get your ult out. So Malphite probably won't even be taking much chip damage from this champion. Yeah, when you look at both drafts, C9 have great team fight. The problem is their lanes will be getting pushed in, right? Silas and Malphite will be getting pushed in versus the Graves and versus the Syndra. So if, if Genji can't find early leads, I feel like Cloud9's team fighting is just so one-dimensional, so simple, that they should come out ahead if they get good setup around objectives. But I absolutely love the adjustment. Complete shift, as you already highlighted. Now they are the team that needs to weather the storm. We know Genji has a strong early game. Can they make big leads? Can they press their advantages? So much CC, so much setup. Can they make it work in the early game? Because when this Malphite gets going, when this Poppy gets going, when there's a Silas in the mid lane taking away ults, you know Cloud9 have the tools that they need to come out on top in these team fights. Yep, they've got Poppy to try and play bouncer to the Rakan, to the engage of Genji for later create some space for Misfortune to be able to channel ultimate. And probably the biggest threatening thing to the Misfortune going to be that long range Syndra stun. And just like you talked about, Kobe, the Syndra is so kind of single target damage champion. All of Gen G are very single target damage champions. If they can get the kill onto Malphite or Poppy and start to move forwards, they will win the fight. But C9 have so much zone control with Malphite ultimate, Poppy Welcome knockaways, Silas Sunday. taking away, Rakan ultimates, MF Leona. There's so many ways that they can control zones around these objectives. So Gen G have to be careful, but if they can pick the right target and move forward slowly, and there is a world where they can start to contest despite not having set up. I wonder too if uh, both of them are going to start top side because Clid definitely has a clear path to try and make plays off of Rakan Jin. So much setup for him down there, and Leona generally trying to play it super aggressively as well. Um, being a typical pretty good answer to Rakan, trying to stun him as soon as he goes in. So Clid probably start red, head down towards bottom side, see if you can make any early pass. Uh, at the Scuttle Crab and if they can get the push. Yeah, I feel like Genji should have three lanes of push. Sven's not running the Comet, and I think Silas and Malphite will get pushed in. Melee's into ranged. So I imagine Genji will have three pushing lanes. Maybe Blabber can just Ooh. kind of mismatch what Clid is doing, but it looks like they're going to match, so Blabber should have an issue. He might have an issue trying to take away Scuttle Crabs. He might get double crab this game. We'll have to see what happens, but it's not the end of the world. Since Clid is actually crossing now to Blue Quadrant start, he could easily just go for a big stack wave here on Malphite. Graves easily can control the wave here versus Fudge and really try and punish him. A lot of the times, yeah, you want to just easily pick Malphite into a lot of these AD matchups and soak up and weather the storm early on, but that can be a real opportunity for Genji. And that's how you naturally shut down Malphite in these lanes. You stack a big wave, you dive him level 3, level 4, you get his TP out, and then your top laner can consistently keep the push while having a TP advantage, right? The problem is their setup is not great for a dive. They have no lockdown CC and Graves auto attacks can be dodged pretty easily, but we'll keep our eyes out for it. Hey, Drew, we're going to get the fourth shot off, but immediately we're going to see Cloud9 stepping forward. Sven invoking it a back away. Much better early trades than in the previous game. See if Blabber uh, tries to early cross. Yeah, he's skipping his Krugs in order to get up to top quadrant early to try and ward for Fudge to allow him to at least see an advance if they do want to bring in the extra reinforcements for building on the wave and diving. Perks, of course, is going to get pushed in as well on the Silas here. Trying to trade your life for your minion wave uh, constantly in the early stages here. Yeah, Silas naturally works by, if he wants to get the push past level 3, level 4, he has to trade his HP for it. And then he trades aggressively and catches the wave afterwards. Blabber could do a path here where he does blue wolves into bot crab and then make sure he doesn't get double crapped here. But Fudge is really low. We talked about the early dives and the early stacking waves. Clid won't be in here in time, you imagine. Fudge is really low. I also want to point out, uh, since he, yeah, Clid is definitely going to continue farming here, not going to be the wave timing, that the deep ward that BDD put towards Raptors does still provide them that value. So they know if you try and make the play on top side, Poppy is there for a blocker. Uh, so be very careful about trying to set that one up. And Genji, not going to look for the risk. Scraps, uh, crabs spawning now, though. 
Yeah, Clit is hovering around mid. They have got a good kill pressure. Syndra Lee Sim, we saw Dam one run this exact same comp. Blabber is doing as we expected. He goes bot to top, but then he backtracks down to bot side because he knows Clit is getting this top grab. He has no mid, no top push, so he won't get double crap. Blabber about to be spotted. Of course, no camps on the top side for Lee Sim to take, but can provide yeah. a little bit more pressure there. Blabber finally spotting out that ward, will opt to take it away. And of course, in the meantime, mid lane pressure being kept up in our Mercedes Benz featured matchup. Perks and BDD can be the huge difference makers for both their team. For Perks now, though, he just has to survive, and that might be difficult if Clid comes yeah. over this. Whoa! Gets in! Oh, he cancels oh. it! Cancels it! Is he gonna kill back? No! Clid just barely surviving. Yeah, good timing on the stun there, knowing, knowing that the Lee Sin's going to take it in, but perfect! Stun from BDD, lining that one up as Perks tries to dash away, hits him through the line. First blood in the hands of Clid. The wave is in such a good state here for Gen G. They could TP top if they have a good top wave and dive fudge. BDD could use his TP top because they have a cannon wave and they were pinging the cannon wave coming into top right now. We'll see if they do opt to go for it. But Perks had vision when Clid was showing. Does end up falling. Nice little try there. There's the TP top. BDD is going for it. They are going to go for the top dive. We don't see top wave, but it's probably stacking up. Fudge might just be dead here. Yeah, he's... He's Rassel. definitely... He has to flash the stun. Hard for Graves to contribute in this exchange, and else he gets knocked away from the tower. All too easy. Clean from BDD and Rascal. Yeah, we talked about Gen.G having these pushing lanes, and there it is. They get TP advantage mid, they transfer at the top. Now Fudge will have to TP back top, and Rascal can save his TP. So this early game for Gen.G with pushing lanes, they're playing it to perfection to and get a lead. And you know the whole time Cloud9 have to play catch up here. They're not going to have any extra resources to pull off those counter attacks that we saw Gen.G do last time around, when they're the ones with the, with the extra security. So once again, we're in a game where extra global is in the hands of Gen.G. And it's so difficult here for Cloud9 to try and play look aggressively. At, look at the ward behind Sven and Vulcan. If they try to push this next wave in, they're going to get TP'd on by Rascal. So Gen.G have so many tools to work with. C9's bot lane already kind of thinking about it. Have to be careful. Rascal might just TP back top though, so C9 will get information. Yeah, it's good communication until they get that extra global out and they know that there's no extra threat. Now they're going aggressive. Right. Just trade back and forth. Vulcan's base would have gotten canceled anyway. So stepping away, but Ruler pushing forward. Both AD carries relatively low on mana. But boots and three pots alongside a biscuit means Ruler's sitting pretty comfortable here. He's gonna get forced out the cleanse. Sven now getting aggressive. All he's got left is auto attacks. So like trying to find the disengage, but Keeping Genji's bot lane in lane for now. Yeah, Sven tried to use the heal to gap close onto Ruler, but Ruler's running fleet and boots, so he got the move speed buff and just ran straight away. He has PTA, Sven, so he wants to look for these all-ins. Comet for the push, PTA for the all-ins. Again, top BDD it. moving topside. Fudge is going to have to drop this wave, I think. Fudge, so hard for him to survive in this context. Yes, the tower will block the auto attacks, but they're just collapsing. They're just denying waves. The Malphite's getting nothing. It's the best way to play against Malphi. They're trying to get through the lane. You don't let them soak up any experience, any extra minions up there. It does mean bottom side, you have to overload as Cloud9. You see Poppy trying to do the same thing to the bottom lane oh. of Gen G. This hurts, doesn't it? Fudge can't even walk up. He has Spellbook, and you can see on the top left, he swapped to Exhaust. He fancied himself maybe a 1v2 on the tower with the Exhaust, but it's just a trade-off. Malphi's losing resources, Graves is getting ahead. Same thing on the bottom side. Gen G's bot lane is going to be forced to back off. But they're on a timer. It's a 2v2 if Blabber walks away. And there's another timer here. The objective's not synced up on side of the map, so there's there's still extra time for Rift Herald to spawn. Meanwhile, Alti goes dead. in, stun connects Clid with the follow-up. Easy follow-up. Clid grabbing another kill in the mid lane. BDD and Clid on fire. BDD has Perks' number this game. Stun after stun. There's a reason he was in the music video. <laughs> I have to say, Genji is playing beautifully through mid here. You see, Blabber is around. Oh. Might find Clid, but Clid is level six. He could just insta-kick him here. Blabber. Trying to walk away from this one, can't obviously deny the engage with the steadfast yeah. presence. So we'll just walk away there, but of course, BD keeping pressure up in the mid lane. Perks with no TP means he's going to at least lose a little bit here, but the cannon means that he will be back just in time. Yeah, Clit has been playing beautifully through mid. Two times he's visited the lane, two times he's got a kill, and when he doesn't visit, he helps BDD move towards top to dive fudge to zone him away. So this early game, fantastic from Gen.G. And you have to remember, for Clit, this is personal. When he was on T1, Got beat by Perks. When he's on T1 at Worlds, got beat by Perks. Last year in quarterfinals, beaten by Perks. He's getting a nice, nice bit of revenge here in game two. I want to focus too on BDD because he's been such a big component of Gen.G getting into this position. So many big victories with the Zoe. And 
when he first came into the LCK, he was he was heralded as the, the big challenger to Faker, and yet more recently it gets overshadowed by Showmaker, gets overshadowed by uh, the rest of the Jovi. the Jovi. big Jovi. mid laners yeah. in 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 LCK, and yet he's performing such a critical role for the team. Yeah, 2016 he came in on the CJ Enthus. Perks also started his debut in a major region in the LCS in 2016 as well. Both players been playing the same amount of time in their respective leagues, and just like you said, it feels like 2017, 2018. King's own was the kind of glory days for BDD, but he's making a statement here at World 2021. Now, though, as you take a chance to look in on the map, 2K gold lead in favor of Genji in this early game. Really with focus in the previous match this time. Still getting a little bit of attention, but it's the mid lane that has really been shut down by the side of Genji. Sven did get a few tower plates, does get some gold back. He may need to be the member on the side of C9 to step up in this matchup. Yeah, I think a big thing to take away right now is C9 have the Herald. They actually took it away from Genji, so Blabber can use that on any lane he wishes, and Bot Tower has three plates left. So, yes, Genji have this top side pressure, but if Blabber can get towards Bot, they should be able to get themselves first tower of the game for Sven. And that'll weather the gold lead a little bit. Uh, and obviously, going into team fights, we expect C9 to have more control, but Gen G are going to be a single target damage composition. And if they're ahead and they can take someone down and make it a 5v4 from the get go, they will be favored. Clit still playing around mid. Exactly. This is how the early stages are theoretically supposed to play out. Maybe not so many uh, kills towards the, towards the mid lane, but you know, Cloud9 trying to weather the storm here until they can group up and have that dedicated frontline. Until then, frontline on top side of the map is kind of hung out to dry. Gen G, though, with a stop on bottom side, will be able to get this uh, dragon even with vision. Yeah, they saw Blabber on the top crab. They'll trade that for a Drake. Midway being contested Oh, here. he jumps out. Perk stolen ultimate. A lot of damage going down, but Perks will walk out alive. They actually, Clit jumped out of the dragon pit to go further zone Zven here as they watched him walk back from the tower. Yeah, Fudge has exhaust. I think he needs to pop that on Rascal soon to get his TP back up because that should be coming up soon and he needs it if they're going to play towards the bot side of the map. Blabber basing will move out towards bot side to try and contest. This bot tier one with Herald. We'll see if Fudge uses it to make sure he can have that TP up and available. There, there it is. Does use it there, so we will have That's TP the Perks. The Perks gonna get caught out, gonna get locked up. There's too much chain CC. He gets to push W, but very little else. Gen G with a clean kill. River control for Gen G, and they find Perks again. Cloud9 have lost their chess piece in the middle. They have lost any authority going for, you know, any type of teleport towards the bottom side of the map, and they continue to have to wait. Yeah, Gen G just keep playing through mid. Shutting down perks, it means that they can control both side lanes. Yes, Fudge used Exhaust and swap the TP, but they're focusing out on perks the whole game long. Feels like Clid's behind BDD on every single mid wave, and life's always there to respond. Herald's just gonna run out and be used in mid. Maybe Gen G can stick around and stop this from crashing, but BDD needs to base. Yes, TP. Clid is behind him. I think they can shut this Herald down. The wave's coming in. Perks, no TP. Does arrive in time. They do have support roam here for Vulcan. He's up at the wave, but this wave has to be cleared out pretty quickly as the reset from Genji's bottom side is going. Ushering it up here to get the charge off. Yep, should crash. A little bit of an awkward stare down there. As I say that, the eye gets hit. Clear that smite as well. They could full commit this if they want to. There it is, the full commit. Go it. Does not interrupt the dash in from the Poppy, and they take away the charge. That's 360 gold that Cloud9 are not going to get. And now Blabber, he's going to pay for it with his life. This is disaster for C9. Absolute dominance for Gen G. This is just Gen G W after Gen G W. Smite kill on the Herald and taking down the jungler afterward. No smite or no flash used from Blabber to get out of there either, as Clid just jumped in on him. Yeah, BDD and Clid are doing all the work Gen G need in this early game. Moving top to help Rascal out, making sure life's unlocked on the map. Ruler's just catching waves and he's even in CS. The whole map is theirs once again, as we saw in game one. Gen G winning out on this early game. I mean, this is one of the things you really want to see from the side of Gen G, them being able to BDD's TP again. pressure ahead with their advantages every time with the extra cooldown. Fudge, ulti ignite. They have to play this one smart, but for now, BDD just zoning him away. Looks like they're going to be happy with just the tower. Malphite going in with the ultimate. The ignite going down as well. Fudge, nice sidestep, but does not dodge the stun. Blabber now stepping forward, just trying to get something, anything back. Rascal, though, with the immortal shield bow, makes it pretty easy for him to walk away from this one. The tower will live, but Fudge drops. BDD is single handedly carrying Gen G in this early game. Yes, Clit's made some great plays, but his wave control around mid, the resources Gen G are putting in him from jungle, he's just snowballing the top side of the map so perfectly. It's the coordination. When when 
you're handed so many advantages for the early game with all pushing lanes and and the extra jungle pressure on mid actually opening up and yeah you know bdd set him up with all those stuns for the early kills uh but he was there and everybody moving to complete on the play once again more harassment on perks Lid getting aggressive looks like he fancies himself a 1v1 perks just gonna kick him right back out sonic wave will not reconnect there'd be no re-engage there now eyes for the next play they have the teleport ready from rascal as well to be able to answer two minutes left on mountain dragon to spawn and they've actually uh, finished up on the bottom side with both Gale Forces as well. So plenty of CC coming through. Life starting to roam with Clid. Ultimate available pretty quickly here. And the Flash. The good thing for Gen.G is top will win in isolation. C9 have to play bot side. It's the only real winning lane that they have. They need to play through mid though. And Gen.G are shutting that down, taking away their bot side jungle. Top will win in isolation. Rascal two levels up. C9 need to force Gen.G out. And the thing is, because they're winning top side so hard, they also can teleport first there with uh, with Rascal because there's no Malphite ultimate, so there's no way for him to stop a teleport, stop an extra play, and they just get wins on both sides. Cloud9 being bled out of this game. This is a 6K gold lead, rather 5K gold lead, at 14 minutes into the game. Tower plates will fall as Genji find themselves with a massive, massive advantage. In the previous game, Cloud9, they found a mid-game skirmish. They found a way to come back. They're going to need to dig even deeper here in game two to get back into this one. And look what Rascal's doing. He's repaying the favor to BDD. All he's going to do now is push in top and move towards mid. So Perks has to play even more scare, take away camps, get deep vision as to where Blabber is. So that unlocks the rest of the map. So this top tower falling, Rascal in isolation can just keep pushing and pushing and controlling the whole map. They're literally taking everything from Cloud9. They are pillaging the jungle, taking the towers, taking the dragons, 45 seconds left on this one. As you're talking about Rascal with the extra deep vision here, he can push oh another wave. God. First move, it's it's an absolutely he's, dominating performance. He's almost 3K gold up in 14 minutes. And gentlemen, this is so important for the side of Gen G because they have not been a team that has performed in quarterfinals. They have not been a team that's performed internationally in best of five, but game one, and now in game two, they're looking dominant. Redemption is what we heard from the desk at the start of the day. Redemption for Gen G, and while they're not there yet, this is a damn fine start. Yeah, we thought Gen G would win the early game, and they did, but they're winning it way harder than you expected. I think C9 have to start doing something soon, otherwise they're gonna get bled out. These towers are gonna start to fall, mid tower will fall, and C9 needs to start contesting objectives. You can see they have some kind of setup around the bot side of the map. Blabber might start up that dragon, and Fudge has TP and ult up available now, so we'll see what C9 up to do, but Rascal's just soloing this Herald. No, the eye is gonna, nope, not gonna open. There you go, got it down. Is he gonna just take it away? Who actually got that? Rascal got it, I believe. We'll get the buff as well. All right, so walk him away. There they can go. pop that mid right away and then run to Dragon as well. It feels like the stars are lining here for Genji. They're playing so well, so coordinated. Fudge moving back to topside. He does have teleport available, but there's not really any good wards to teleport in on. So again, Cloud9 have to seed control of the map. So massive now for Genji. Absolute control, moving down again, taking every single objective. So they have to give up on this dragon for sure. Look at this, Genji are even not going to overextend resources. They won't even let Fudge push up to the tower. They send Rascal immediately back to top side. You have full control, go collect the wave, get the dragon as well. And to add salt to the wounds, Rascal saved Herald. So if C9 overcommit and Fudge TPs towards bot, Rascal can pop Herald top and get a tier two for himself and keep snowballing this 1v1 matchup, which will be isolated over side. And Gen.G, all they need to do now is crack open bot tier one. We'll see how they choose to do it, but BDD has TP. He can TP on that ward Clid just put down, but it looks like with life in base and Rascal just catching top waves, they're just gonna slow it down a bit and wait for bases to come in. What can Cloud9 do? They've got flash ready on Fudge too. Sometimes, uh, you know, in the later stages, it's hard to get your Malphite ults off actually, so it's important when you do have flash to be able to go for the flash one so your opponents can't react to it. And they're going to rely on him plus Leona finding some big engage to turn the, the tables in this game because Gen G are just running away with it. And Fudge is going to be strong if we go late enough in this game. Lord Dominic is certainly going to make it very difficult as Rascal has that at 16 minutes. But full armor against 380 sources on the opposite side. He'll be tanky. He will hit hard. But he just has to survive. They can't afford to fall any further behind. But saying that, Gen G, total control of the map, continuing to push their vision line forward, continuing to push out their side lanes. And the only thing Gen G are sad about right now is the fact that Baron is not up and available. Sven 
He's gonna Gale Force out. The charm's still gonna connect, but the knock will miss, and that is crucial. The big thing for Gen G is don't make a mistake. Don't give C9 a 5v5. Don't give them a numbers advantage fight. Just make sure you control all waves, keep them all pushed in. Don't overextend and play for dragons. There They're it is. Keep double top control. Here's the double TP from C9. Can they find anything? This is Bonded, a miracle TP. play if they can. Flabber trying to fish for something, but the flash out takes him to safety. Fudge looking for an opportunity. Clid waiting in the darkness. Can't go back for the kick. Is going to focus, kicking the poppy back into the team, trying to delete him before the fight even starts. Fudge not even a chance to ultimate quite yet. Sven's ulti really not hitting anybody. Perks now set to fall. A bit of a heal now coming out, trying to walk away with the snare. Can they turn it back? Yes. Clint now down. They're running away. They're trying to fight into the pinch. Fudge waiting at his opportunity, but he runs away with the alt and dies to the sin. Anyway, Sven has to run for his life. Genji in total control. And they've got Rift Hill. That means he can immediately activate it. Just pin down Vulcan. Nowhere for him to go. That's going to be two on the bottom side. Yeah, that's going to be two towers as well. You expect C9's dead. No TPs. That was the last real stand play that they had to stop Genji's siege on all towers. And we saw how Genji just picked them off one by one, isolating Blabber first and then Perks. Yes, Clit died, but a four for one and two towers. I mean, with the extra vision coverage, that control ward in Tribrush for Clit to just sit on, waiting as Cloud9 come walking back and just kicking Blabber right in to the the fourth to the first bullet from ruler and they uh burst him down make him look like a squishy champion they're gonna take away his red as well maybe rascal can burst it with bdd before it resets there it is blabber is left with nothing and game one was close it was back and forth there were opportunities for c9 it came down to final objectives but this game is a slaughter gen g 8k in the lead double dragons Damn, I mean, damn close to a perfect game outside of a tower and a kill. Yeah, and Genji read the play very well. They see the double TP coming in, and they just respond instantly. Oh, that Vulcan. thought. Clid now kicking off. Now immediately going back into Vulcan, trying to find these isolated picks. If they take down Vulcan, maybe they yeah. get a little bit more. Ruler now stepping forward. Easy now for Genji. This is... This is a stomp from Genji. C9 need to do something fast because this Dragon Soul is going to go in around six, seven minutes time, and Genji are just going to keep them in their base for the rest of the game. There's no teleport on Rascal, so while they did lose Vulcan, they were fishing around for a possible pick there. Maybe they could make something happen, get some gold back, but it's just so dangerous to set up any sort of play for Cloud9. And with Baron coming onto the map pretty shortly here, it's going to be another tool for Genji to pull them across with. Since they got two towers on bottom side with that Rift Herald, it's wide open for Split Push. Maybe two top side. C9 not wanting to fully commit to the fight. They don't have the information they need to feel confident. It's so easy for Gen.G just to return to bot side split push. Uh, even without a teleport, they, they don't even have to, uh, to worry about the cross map play there from Cloud9 since they have such deep vision coverage and so, so much control. Nobody can solo answer Rascal. So from the Cloud9 side, it has to be throw members at a pick somewhere, try and just throw bodies at the problem. Yeah, indeed, Rascal is the biggest problem for C9 right now. I feel like he's in a control sideways. I think he can even 1v2 perks and fudge at this point. I mean, it's a terrifying prospect. We're at the stage of the game where, short of absolute disaster for Gen.G, there are no winning choices for Cloud9. You will always be taking losing trades, but the right losing trades maybe can give you enough time to scale up later in the game, buy time to survive, to look for that team fight. All right, let's change notes here then. Uh, I've heard tales of something about a 0-2 power spike. Uh, where, where does that originate? Perks comfort boys? zone? The Perks comfort zone? <laughs> yeah, yeah. For we're on track. We've got perks randomly dying. We've got perks dying on side lane. We are in, we are oh, blubber C9 fan for a power spike, and this might just be it. Perks now going in. They've taken down BDD and Kobe ask, and you shall receive. And Dragon spawning now as well. So 40 seconds on BDD. He does have TP available when he respawns. Can C9 take away this dragon? It looks like they have no setup towards the bot side, and they face check Rascal. They will die. So a pick's a pick, but Gen.G still own the map. I believe the most recent memory I can remember of Perks' comfort zone was against Fnatic, where they just reverse swept them. It's going to take a lot. They're going to have to dig deep if they want to come back in this game, let alone this series. For now, Gen G, even after that pick, remain comfortably in the driver's seat. Three dragons poised in five minutes to take the soul. Cloud9, you got to be strong enough to fight for that one in five minutes. That might just be the last chance you get. Does Rascal have Infinity Edge in base? I think, oh, no, he has Bloodthirster. Uh, he, yeah, he's, he's unkillable. It's so hard to kill. You mentioned the possibilities of 2v1ing as raids. Those are real for Rascal here, and his teleport is coming back up, so that, that split push has so much more power behind it because there's no answer there from Cloud9. So sometimes you'll see people trailing the split pusher. Here's the Axe Effect replay where you can see them. No hesitation into BDD, into the wall. 
able to get a little bit of gold they, back for themselves. They need to do that again. They need to do it multiple right. times. Ruler dashes away. Tickle's right. coming in. Inside. They managed to catch out Sven before the fight even kicks off. Clicking to finish that one. Perk's now going forward, but can't Cloud9 get one back in return? Ruler still standing. Ruler running. He's just so fast. Fudge now locked up, denying him anything back in return, but Perk's zooming forward. He's going to finish off the AD carry. BDD under the tower. Cloud9 fighting. They don't have the resources, but they're trying to make it work anyway. Perk's goes gold and wants to heal back up. Blabber trying to knock that back. Perk stepping forward on a BDD. Instead, we'll find through a con. That's the double for Perk's. Has he held on long enough? Clint now coming. Perch needs to make it out. He's to hightail. Slowly but surely, Genji winning this fight. They've just got too much of a lead for Cloud9 to find it. That is going to be it. Genji are going to wipe him off the map and take the Baron, Kadrel. Oh, it's an ace. Two for five. Perks tried his best on the backside. So many cool mechanical plays, but I think the MVP of that fight there is Clint. Singles out Sven before he can even join the fight and then comes in and cleans up for Genji. That's going to be a Baron, and I think Oh, C9, three minutes on the Infernal Soul. That's their last last chance to fight. Exactly. In late, in late, I say late game situations. This is mid game situations where you have such a big lead. You know that your opponent will be looking around for these types of pick plays. And since they just picked BDD off here and they have that deep ward through the jungle, they see Sven walking up. So life and Clid picks him off on the roam, and the teleports come to answer. Yeah, it's already a 4v5. Ruler actually lives through a lot of the burst, and then it turns into a 3v5. Perks actually miraculously takes down Ruler here with his flash, and then does take down another member straight afterwards, so they at least get two kills for themselves, but there's just too much firepower. They're just hitting them with their wallets, and C9 have to run for the hills. Perks, like we said, two kills, but that's all they got. Yeah, and those scenarios, since Cloud9 are so far behind, they have to try and take the opportunity, jump on it, so they full commit to it. Uh, but with that super deep ward by the Wolves, they did see it trailing through, and good job there by Genji to recognize. Teleports defend it, picking off Sven as he's walking up to it, defend it, and now you're in this scenario where Baron Buff allows them. No flash BDD. Again, isolated. Fudge over the wall, right under Ruler, trying to split up the team by BDD. Is he going to get knocked out from this one for now? Knocking two members away. Maybe maybe they have the main advantage to kick things off, but Cloud9 just taking this opportunity to walk away because there's a Graves pushing in on the top side. Nobody can stop Rascal. Yeah, Fudge finds the ultimate onto Ruler, but there is no damage follow-up. They can't kill him. BDD's stopwatch was phenomenal. I think Blabber looked for the E, but he stopwatched before it connected, so he didn't get stunned. And by that time, C9 ran out of gas to actually take him down, so that's it. Fudge has the ultimate. Neither does Blabber, Wait, neither does Vulcan. Man, locked up, kicked back. Genji marching down mid lane. Members of C9 will not be enough to stop them as Rathal keeps the push up on the top side of the map. They want at least two inhibitors. They might just look for the end. Yeah, they have a top wave coming in. The safe option is just to take this top in base and then set up for the soul, set up for the bot tier three. Or they could look to end. The problem is Sven's alive in 20, and you don't want to throw this game away. If you do die and lose away the Infernal Soul, then it's just going to be more time for C9, but Genji are so far ahead, maybe they want to force it anyway. The lead is massive. Fury insurmountable. Maybe, just maybe. Fudge, no ultimate, no flash, though. Cloud9 just have to stand under their own towers and watch the game fall away from them. Gemji poised on the cusp of match point. Can they bring it out? Can they get a little bit more? Vulcan taking down Blabber, trying to hold on. Perks has a stolen Cinderall, but it's just not going to be enough. Sven with two items will not be able to do anything in this exchange. Curtain calls come out as now Genji advanced to match point. Wow, what a statement game from Genji. I even thought they would base there and just play it a little bit safe in this <laughs> best of five, but no, they can just run it down and end the game. C9, nothing is working right now. Yeah, that, that one start to finish here was played so well by Genji. You mentioned at each step, the extra cooldown, they then make the play with it, build the minion wave, punish this Malphite, rotate through mid lane, and so many plays on mid set up by BDD Syndra. He lands the sun, yep. Lit is there, they finish the kill, and while Ruler is the only world champion left on this organization, I'm so happy for BDD playing this 